Hello everybody. Yes, I'm in a hoodie and yes, I'm in bed. Today is Saturday night and I have a colonoscopy and endoscopy on Tuesday afternoon, which is just in a couple of days. And I was planning on starting a video on Monday documenting my prep process and um, all of the liquid diet and everything leading up to the colonoscopy and endoscopy and then my actual experience during the procedures on Tuesday. So I wasn't planning on filming for a couple more days but my body just decided to crash and burn today and I thought it was worth talking about. Hopefully the next couple of days I won't feel as bad but I figure if I if, my, if the whole point of this video is documenting my colonoscopy and endoscopy, why not show what's leading up to that? Why I'm getting those scopes? It's because I feel like this. Because I'm in pain, and I'm fatigued, and I'm nauseated, and I don't have an appetite. Um, but mainly the pain. And so, this is part one of my journey to my colonoscopy and endoscopy. Here we go, let's do it. Hello everyone, welcome back. It is now Monday night at 6 p.m. So it's pretty much exactly two days after I filmed my last footage. And all day today I've been doing my liquid diet in preparation for my scope tomorrow at 1 p.m. And in exactly one hour on the dot, I start my prep for my Miralax mixed with my liquids. Um, for right now though, I've just been having a clear liquid diet and I just kind of wanted to go over what I've been eating slash drinking and what I plan to eat slash drink tomorrow. I have done scopes roughly 10 times and so I kind of have learned what works for me and what doesn't work for me and the first thing I wanted to point out was if you have had a scope before and the prep was too challenging for you or didn't work right with your system, um, I would encourage you to talk to your doctor about it and see what you can do to change it for the next time. So I was diagnosed eight years ago and I've had at least one scope every year for the past eight years. And I've been roughly the same height and weight that whole time. And I've always been given kind of an extreme amount, in my opinion, um, of laxatives. And up until this year, every single time I've done a scope, I have profusely thrown up. Um, it is just too much on my system and it kind of just overloads my body. And so I have a new GI doctor this year and I told her that I don't think that that amount was working for me personally. So she worked with me to adjust what my regimen would be this time. So this time my regimen is pretty simple. I just dissolve one bottle of Miralax, which is 238 grams, into 64 ounces of liquid, which I chose to do Propel and it averaged to be about four bottles of Propel. And I will do some of that tonight and the rest of it tomorrow morning. As far as food goes, I've got some old reliables as well as a couple new ones that I'm throwing into the mix. So one thing that I have used at pretty much every scope is these vegan orange jellos. Um, and the reason why I really like jello in particular is because of the texture. Um, I have found that when you're doing a clear liquid diet, um, you can get really, really bored and perhaps nauseated by just drinking liquid. And I also feel more hungry that way. So in my brain, if I eat a somewhat solid object with a spoon, I feel like I'm eating and therefore am less hungry. Another old reliable is popsicles. Um, I always switch up the brand and the flavor. That way I don't associate one specific brand with having a scope. And I like to really mix up temperature and texture when I'm on a clear liquid diet. So I've got the gummy, I've got the jelly, I've got the liquid, 
and now I have frozen solid. So that just gives me extra variation to help me not get bored and sick and tired of what I'm consuming for roughly 30 hours. Something new that I'm trying this year is coconut water, which I'm loving and will definitely keep in my notes for future scopes. It is very hydrating and I feel like this is a little bit more filling to me than if I were to just drink regular water. I feel like it has some like sustenance, sustenance to it. One thing that I was going to touch on too is that I feel like a lot of the foods that you can and are supposed to eat during scope prep are very sugary and for me personally that makes me just feel kind of like run down after a while. I get brain fog and I just feel a little lethargic and I get headaches which is what I'm experiencing right now. So I feel like the coconut water kind of had a less sweet taste but was more hydrating than regular water so I think that's a great choice. On the note of sweet versus savory, um, something else is ramen, liquid, not the noodles. So in the past I've just boiled vegetable broth and ate it and let me tell you, it's not good. And so this time I went to the store and I got vegan chicken flavored ramen and um, miso ramen. And I'm basically just going to take the noodles out, save them for a rainy day, and boil water and dump the seasoning packets in it. So now I have to go mix my solution together to be ready for 7 p.m. when I start that. And then I'll be back for my scope tomorrow at 1. guys I am now home it is actually 8 p.m. on Tuesday night so it's been about seven hours since my procedure and I'm finally feeling a little bit awake the last clip that you saw of me was when they had taken me back into the hospital bay area and I had just gotten dressed into my gown and had my hospital band put on and it was right before I got my IV and my oxygen and then I'm under for roughly an hour. And then they say that it only takes about 10 minutes to come back out of sedation. But for me, it always takes at least an hour. Um, it just has always been that way. I always am extra affected by sedation. So I sleep for a very extended period of time. And then when I come back awake, I am usually very out of it and very loopy, which I was. So um, my mom sat with me when the doctor came in. Basically, it was pretty good news. Um, there's mild inflammation going on in my stomach lining and some mild inflammation going on at the end of my large intestine, but nothing to raise any alarms about. Um, I can continue on with the current biologics that I'm taking, which is a really good piece of news to hear because I did not want to switch around to different biologics. I've been on the same medication regimen for about four years and I just don't want to go through the hassle of trying something else and taking that risk of whether or not that may or may not work. They did, however, schedule an MRI that I have to get pretty soon because I've been having some pretty sharp shooting pains going on in my upper abdomen, which I thought was closer to my stomach area, but they said that the inflammation going on in my stomach, while there was some inflammation, was mild enough that it wouldn't cause the type of sharp pain that I'm having. And so they think it's going on in my small intestine, which they couldn't really get with the scopes. The endoscopy kind of saw the top of my small intestine, and the colonoscopy kind of saw the bottom of my small intestine, but they didn't really get a view of the middle of it. So I hope that was somewhat informative and somewhat relatable to those of you who have had colonoscopies and or have IBD. Colonoscopies are something that a lot of people can relate to even if they don't have IBD because it is pretty common for people to begin getting colonoscopies for cancer screening starting at around age 50. So this is a pretty relatable experience. Um, at the age of 23, I have already had more colonoscopies than most people will have in their entire lifetime. Um, but a lot of people, in America at least, I can't speak to, to other countries because I only live here, 
um, a lot of people will experience a colonoscopy in their lifetime. So I think it's important to just kind of share my tips and tricks because I've been around the bend a few times and I have learned what works best for me and what doesn't. That's the sound of my cat playing with her toy, so I think it's a cue for me to go. Uh, I hope that was helpful for you and I'll see you on the next one.